Hey everyone, welcome to a very special episode of 4315. Today we're chatting with Natalia and Kelsey, two workers involved with efforts to unionize the Hampton location of Mom's Organic Market, which is located in Baltimore, Maryland. This is an extra special episode because prior to union efforts being announced, I had a fascinating email exchange with the CEO of Mom's, Scott Nash. This exchange happened before he knew about the union drive that had been brewing under his radar and before I even knew about it. I had emailed Mr. Nash to see if his stores carried products by No Evil Foods and to tell him about the company's union busting and the mass layoffs. Nash responded by accusing me of spreading what he called fake news put out by unscrupulous union activists. I asked him what was fake news, and he responded by telling me I needed to do my research. I replied back and told Mr. Nash that I was a key organizer in the union drive at No Evil Foods, that I was fired for union activity, that I was awarded thousands in a labor board settlement after they found merit that I was targeted for union activity, and that I have more knowledge about all of this than he could possibly fathom. The conversation ended with Mr. Nash telling me he is, quote, probably the most liberal workers' rights CEO I will ever come across. He happened to say that on the same day, his workers announced that they were unionizing at the Hampton location. So I emailed him back and told him now is his chance to prove his liberal workers' rights cred. But strangely, he stopped responding. So here we are, just over a month since that email exchange, and I honestly cannot wait to hear about the most liberal workers' rights CEO I've ever met, and how he has responded to efforts by his workers to unionize. So with that said, Natalia and Kelsey, welcome to 4315. Thank you. Thank you for having Thank us. For having us. <laughs> um, let me just start by asking both of you, um, whoever wants to go first, uh, how long you have each worked at Moms and what you both do there? I um, have worked there for, it'll be two years, like this month, I think. Um, and I work in the coffee roasting department and then generalist, so cashier, stocking, working the trucks, et cetera. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a part-time generalist, so I work morning trucks, uh, specifically just, you know, stocking, register, just all over the store. What actually sparked the union drive? Um, there's a lot, and there's a lot of unions out there. Like, why'd you choose the Teamsters, and what sparked the drive? It's been it's been a long it's been a long time effort. Um, Cassie and Matt were behind it for over over a year now. I've only heard of it about six months ago, but basically stuff that everybody in the store agrees on. Um, to begin with, we don't make enough money we our starting wage is much less than what's considered survival wage in the city of baltimore if you take both the mit survival wage uh calculator into consideration and the survivability index of our city into consideration my friends struggle to pay rent every month because we don't have enough money and the stores just keep on expanding. Mr. Nash is opening another store in Boston this fall and another store in Philadelphia just got open. So clearly money is not a problem, but we don't, we don't see it. <laughs> we don't make enough money. We accrue one sick hour per 30 labor hours, oh which God. equals a cap of five sick days a year. Our PTO doesn't start until two years of employment with the company. I've been there for a year and a half. I don't have PTO. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> for for, um, for comparisons, uh, Walmart starts at one, at one year of employment, so it's bad. And uh, another huge thing, one of the main things that's important to us is, uh, is that we are at will, which means unless you have a a contract, a contract with with union representation. You don't have job security. You can be you can be laid out at any moment for any given reason. Um, whenever they want to 
boot you basically and all the policies and benefits that we have right now like free lunch free coffee everything can be taken away from us even if they decide to give us pto give us more sick time it can't be taken away because we are at will yeah that, so, and that's that's honestly <laughs> such an important point too just because i know a lot of these progressive companies i i mean i've seen it over and over where, where they'll they'll say we give you this and we give you that and we give you so much. Why do you need a union? It's well, because it can all be taken away tomorrow if you don't have a contract. Exactly. Exactly. You can, uh, that's what means being at will. You, you, you're, you don't have any say in your workplace. You don't have power of bargaining. You don't have anything. Uh, Kelsey, you want to elaborate on why we chose Teamsters? Mainly because we do know they had previous or they currently represent Costco in the area. Um, which is known to be a good job, good benefits. Uh, they started $25 an hour. Um, and kind of with their um, experience and like institutional backing, um, they could help us organize ourselves um, with our large store and high turnover rate and eventually get to that majority that we needed. In terms of the tactics that they're using to bust up the union, what uh, what are they doing? Because I know um, they're at least holding the anti-union meetings, right? Yeah. So what happened was very interesting. And it goes back to the emails that you were writing back and forth with the CEO. <laughs> because he was the first to claim, hey, I'm pro-labor. I'm the most progressive CEO you ever meet. And then on... The was it the next week or was it just a few days after we filed the petition? I the don't next remember. Week. It was the next week, right? The week after we filed the petition, there was a huddle. We have we already have like morning and night huddles at the store, so nothing new. Uh, in our huddle, our general manager read a letter from the CEO saying that we are the choice is entirely yours you know i am not going to union bash he used his words he said i am not going to union bash uh but i insist you guys are union educated that's oh, what he Jesus. said it's not union bashing mm -hmm. it's union education <laughs> and then he proceeds on hiring <laughs> two two guys who are Contractors, they are independent contractors. They don't work for a firm. According to themselves, this is what we have been told, Scott Nash hired them after he had interviewed two actual hard-ass, you know, union-busting lawyers that had, quote-unquote, union-busting energy. And he didn't like that. He didn't want that. So he hired those two independent contractors instead. So much so that, at least in my captive audience meeting, he was, they were like, oh, yeah, there is a term for people like us, but we don't like saying it, you know, it just, it just brings out bad vibes. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know what you're <laughs> saying. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, this has been his technique so far. He got, we have these two people, you know, holding captive audience meetings uh, that lasts like up to like 40 minutes to an hour, just your, your general, you know, your average uh, union busting stuff. Like, hey, you know, unions were great uh, before we had the weekend and before we had labor laws, but we have them now for free, so you don't need to pay dues. It's wow. a same old, same old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of um, unions were good, but not for good companies. It's a lot of... Um, kind of union busting with a smile you know like mm -hmm. they have these two men there and they will walk around the store they all you know they engage in conversation with people about tv shows and um and sneakers and um <laughs> then they and then i think we've had about and it kind of varies um because they seem to end up not getting everybody but i think people have had three captive audience meetings in a month on average um and it's basically like a a lot of information with some truth and also misinformation um and the clearest example of this i have is um 
the first captive audience meeting, you know, they would say things like, oh, well, and also to discredit um, the um, the credibility of the Teamsters. Um, so they would say things, oh, like, well, I think the, I think the Teamsters included, you know, MITs in their petition, but that's weird. We got to deal with that. We got to deal with that. Um, but I think that it's going to be a mail-in ballot. Um, and meanwhile, we have already talked to most of the people, so everybody knows um, about the process and how about like that will only be decided um, during like during the stipulation hearing. Um, so everybody knows, and we yeah we we kind of did the stone stonewalling technique, um, and so they kept saying, oh, it's going to be a mail-in ballot. It's going to be a mail-in ballot. Um, and then as soon as they agreed to our terms, which they did agree to them, um, I think because of our stonewalling technique, that same day they immediately switched to, um, you know, oh, well, actually, we think that uh, the election is going to be in the conference room when they actually said it was going to be on the, you know, like on the dock. And now it's going to be back in the conference room. But it was just like as soon as they had information that we knew, they kind of spread more misinformation. Yeah, I think the most, the thing that they said that I, that annoyed me the most is that they kept trying to hammer in our heads. No one knows what will be in the contract. No one knows what will be in the contract. When this is such, you know, when you go to education meetings with your organizers, this is the first, one of the first things that you learn. You, the employee, will write the contract. We are going to elect a committee a group of people that is going to go to the table of negotiations and these people are going to come to us, our co-workers, and they're going to be like, hey, what do we need? What is it that we want to negotiate? You know, we are going to go forward to them and tell them what is it that we want to negotiate for. So obviously, you know, we are the ones writing the contract. It's, it's, it's so obvious, but at this point, I don't think they care anymore. They just try to, to use any blat blatant lie to try to get to us. And that, that was the thing that annoyed me the, the most, personally. Oh, you and me both. Like, it drives me insane the way that they act like the Teamsters are just going to walk in and slap down a contract on the table and be like, this is what you're going to do now. Like, no, that's yeah. not how it works. Yeah. The union is truly the employees that work there. So yeah. it's just, it's amazing. Union busting with good vibes. Like, that's a new one. Yeah. Like, that, that's I mean, fantastic. Um, <laughs> I mean, they can't even, I mean, they can't even really manage the good vibes. Even... The few people, like, you know, the people that were new, the people that we get to talk to, you know, they, I mean, these guys are just kind of like, who's douchebag, to be honest. So, like, <laughs> I mean, it kind of, I mean, they are doing a lot of our job for us because they wanted to hire these good vibes people and people were kind of like, what, you know, like, what's happening? Yeah. My worst experience and was in my second captive uh, audience meeting when I personally, I already had so much stuff going on in my personal life. And in that morning, a great dear co-workers of ours had one of, one of their family members pass, passed away. And that mm -hmm. very morning that I had to attend a captive audience meeting, they are a great friend of ours, very close. And then I was already not in a good headspace, so I am called up to the meeting. I go, I sit down, and then, you know, they start regurgitating anti-union propaganda, and they just start lying about everything. They're, they, they lie about how the, uh, the shop steward um, is going to be elected. They lie about the contract. They lied about all these awful things that unions do, and... I start, I start, I have a mental breakdown. I start bawling my eyes out. I'm just mm -hmm. crying. And, and then I'm like, I bring all of this up to them. I'm like, hey, my friend just lost a, a, a very dear family member to them. And our policy of bereavement is only three days. You only get three paid bereavement days. And then they're like, oh, no, 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 no. They're off. They're off. It's okay. They took the week off. I'm like, Internally, I'm like, that doesn't matter because they're still not getting any paid money for the bereavement that they deserve. And a week is not enough. It, they're not being they're not even getting paid for that one week. So they would only get paid for three days of bereavement. And then I also share my mom is sick. 
I don't have any PTO this because it's true. If something happens to my mom, I don't have any PTO. I don't have any sick time to cover to go see her. And I just start bawling, you know, over those things. And they look at me, the union busters, they notice that I am at a, at a uh, emotional vulnerable uh, state that, you know, this is their opening with me. And this is something that made it very clear to me that those guys are monsters. <laughs> they look at me and they start feeding on that. They're like, oh, well, and you know, you know that if you go, you go with the union, then those things may never change, right? You know that you're still only going to get three days bereavement and you know that you still might not get PTO. You know, if you go with the union, it's only going to get worse because it might, it will be on the contract and you're going to get stuck in the contract for three years. And I'm just like, that was the moment where I gave up looking at them as human beings. I'm like, wow, you guys really have no compassion. You really have no empathy. This is really messed up. Yeah, they're capitalizing so. on it. That's disgusting. <laughs> it is, yeah. That was an awful yeah. experience I had with them. Yeah, oh my God, to take somebody's grief and worry and pain and be like, oh, you think it's bad now? Wait till the union comes. <laughs> like... That, that's horrifying and i'm sorry that that happened to you and uh, that that's oh like no words that these guys are just walking around like who who are they exactly i'm just confused like so there's this, these guys that were hired and they're like where are they hired from like who are they they're not they're so, not from the law firm yeah. right no we don't we don't really know um even i mean that was i think the most frequent and frequented question in the captive captive audiences, even again, people who like we weren't able to quite bring in new people were like, I mean, the most frequent question was, who are you? Who do you work for? Um, I mean, they told, I mean, you know, they said like, we don't, they told one of our coworkers, they don't get that to give that information out because we've gotten threats. And like, what are you doing? <laughs> Bro, it's gotta for? be the Pinkerton. Um, <laughs> that just yeah, gives off I mean, Pinkerton vibes, like hundred percent. Oh, we can't tell you who we work for. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's um, crazy. I mean, yeah, again, like there's just been so many lies and we can, I mean, catch them because they're, some of them are very clear and also because we're communicating and they haven't been super clear on that. I mean, they've said that, oh, well, we're independent contractors, but oh, something about my boss. Um, but they will not tell us who they work for or where they're from. They're just in the third party independent contractors. I mean, they've used multiple words. The the first words that they used when they were introduced to us were, these are people from the union side. I mean, those were the direct words. Um, <laughs> because they are also claiming to be former Teamsters. Oh, um, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Huh. Yeah. So okay. there's, I mean, again, it's like a lot of, it's a, it's a lot of information to confuse people to kind of like, I mean, I don't, I don't exactly, I mean, I think, yeah, I think just to confuse people, but it's like, it's a whole lot of information, a whole lot of mixed information, lies, confusion, misinformation. Mm -hmm. and, and they're the ones that are leading the anti-union meetings? Yeah, it's just, it's the two of them. Um, I mean, and we can do this later, like this past, since Sunday, um, Scott Nash has been holding captive audience meetings. Neither of us have been in those. Um, but it was, so the captive audience meetings was were just um, uh, these two guys who, whose names they claim to be Brandon and Zach. Um, and anywhere from two to five employees. What are their last names? Because I'm going to look them up on LinkedIn. If you have... If <laughs> well, you they have... won't tell us. Wow. We try. The one guy says his name is Brandon Brown. Brandon <laughs> Brown. Brandon Brown. Brandon Brown. Okay. All right. um, Brandon Brown yeah. and John Doe. Okay. Yeah. Um. And, um, which is hilarious. No, I'm, one... Sorry, sorry, Kelsey. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, like, I mean, I'm... Fair. I mean, yeah, these guys are lying about their names and who they're working from. They're not telling us. Like, we, we don't know. We have no idea. Fascinating. No, that's right. that's really weird. <laughs> Time for some research we didn't know what we needed to do. If you it's guys wild. can find these guys, I will be so thrilled. I mean, I, I, I had, I, there was a couple of days I was like, I just, you know, a lot of things. But, um, yeah, no such luck so far. But... Yeah, we, we tried, don't. I mean, we don't. We don't know who these guys are. They won't tell us. They won't tell us. Yeah, who they work for, what their business is, what their names are. Um, 
They don't tell us. Sounds trustworthy. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Well, that that's that's what confuses me the most. I mean, these anti-union meetings, they're supposed to be led by, like, like these are people that you're supposed to trust to give you information and to make an informed decision. And they're bringing in these strangers. I mean, I've seen it before where it'll be management or, you know, like Scott Nash. That makes sense that it's Scott. But for it to just be some Brandon Brown or whatever, it's just so weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I feel like they wanted to co to corroborate. I feel they were they were the better option over the hardest union busting lawyers. You know, like like Kelsey said, it was it was union busting with good vibes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it does seem that they have minimally involved our store managers, um, and I think a lot of this is because we were able to keep our campaign under wraps um, for so long that they did seem to be completely blindsided. And um, because Scott Nash and therefore kind of like corporate and those people that surround him are like so out of touch. Um, I mean, it really seems like they really seem confused about why this could possibly be happening. They, I mean, they really can't seem to understand why why we, we would possibly want to be making more than, you know, $15 an hour with, with like, you know, structured raises. Yeah. Yeah, they don't. They, it, it really it really seems like... I have, a, I have a co-worker that put it perfectly. They were saying, I left my, cop, my captive audience meeting with uh, the CEO telling us that... He was making, you know, fifteen dollars himself working for his own store in the nineties. <laughs> that was the last time that he worked on his store. He was making fifteen dollars an hour in the nineties. We're making fifteen dollars an hour now. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, isn't fifteen dollars an hour in the nineties? Wasn't that good? Like thirty dollars an yeah, hour? Yeah, wasn't that good? Like that? <laughs> That's insane. We're making this right now. <laughs> Again, if you go check the uh, the survival index in the city, it's got to be something about between in the very minimum between twenty five to thirty dollars. This is not even a good wage, everybody. This is just the bare minimum with the way that. The cost of living in the cities is, is with inflation going as it is. It's just the new. It should be the new fifteen. It should be the new minimum. This period. Just the theory that fifteen dollars an hour is livable is just laughable, yeah. especially coming from you know the most liberal, you know, Workers working are. supportive CEO, <laughs> yeah. Mr. Scott Nash. Okay, sorry. I just that's... well, uh, <laughs> no. I mean, it's so fascinating because he's really. I mean, he really latched onto this number. Like he didn't really latch onto living wage. He latched onto this number. So you know, I mean, I think I don't know if he said that to you, but something especially I've seen them kind of like you know, touting on their social media sense is like, Scott Nash has called for a $15 minimum in, you know, in Philly. I feel like that was a, a Philly thing. Um, but, you know, he's so attached to this number and not really anything meaningful. So to to kind of touch on the the, the actual meetings, um, in terms of the, the anti-union meetings, what are you doing to um, – stop the union busting what are you doing to combat the union busting you had briefly mentioned stonewalling we let everyone know communicated with everyone that no matter how tempting it is kind of like fight back with these guys and combat their lies it's in part you know they're lying to get you to say oh that's not true and so they find out who you are um and we just continue to communicate with each other and continue to bring more coworkers in um, and talk about their lives and keep talking about what, uh, what we're fighting for. So, I mean, it was really about communicating with each other constantly. I mean, a lot of communication and frequently and not with these, yeah, random strangers, these union busters, because I mean, they have no power, really. What are they going to do? They're going to leave. Um, you can tell them what you want, but that's just going to help them shape the narrative. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was not communicating with them and communicating with each other, um, continuing to 
bring more of our coworkers in um, and continuing to organize and like reminding people that this is about us and you know our dignity and the dignity of our workplace and not not these random dudes who just showed up yeah, no, and I think that's so important because one of the mistakes that we had made at No Evil Foods was engaging with these union busters, and it, it's exactly how they get a feel for, you know, power structures within, you know, employees and, and different things like that. So I think that the stonewalling approach is just so amazing. Is there um, any other advice that you would give to somebody wanting to start a union and where to use like a jumping off point and just any advice in general for somebody that's thinking about unionizing who might be listening? Um, I would, I would say we were very, at least from my point of view, we were so very lucky to have, uh, to have our exact lineup of employees that we do right now, because we're just so tight. Like we are, more than co-workers, we're actually friends and we care about each other. I feel like, to me, it wouldn't have been possible if we weren't actually this close. And even if you're not close with your co-workers, the bond of solidarity, dude. Just, you know, bonding over the same thing that is, that is you deserve more. The, the, the worker needs more. And I know it sounds cheesy, but I guess listen to what everybody has to say, even if they disagree with you, like from their point of view, treat everybody with respect, like your coworkers, you need to be in this together. You guys need to understand each other and try to work together and cooperate. It just, it just went so great for us because we are so close and we were there for each other. You know, when, when I had a breakdown, Kelsey was there for me. And then when sometimes she is anxious, she texts me, she's like, oh my God, I, I'm, I'm so anxious and I need to get this out of my system. So it just feels so good to have people for you, at least from my point of view. It was, yeah, that's, that's essential to have actual solidarity and bonds with your coworkers. No, I think that's amazing advice. Um, I don't think that's cheesy at all. I think that's like the, the really the core of like organizing itself. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so... You guys know this, but um, just so the audience knows, we're recording this on August 23rd. It's the same day as the rally you all just held earlier today. Uh, so you also had a lot of support for at that rally and the union effort at Moms in general by some pretty prominent figures, such as the Baltimore City Councilwoman Odette Ramos. Um, how was the turnout at the rally? And how has public support been in general? And... Do you think you have the votes to win this? Oh, sorry, that was a lot of questions at once. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, to start with, how was the turnout at the rally? You were saying it was overall positive. Was it crowded? Yes, the rally was incredible. Uh, ever since we started our online campaign, I was expecting a lot of people. I knew the community would be on our side. We had a great turnover of uh, customers, supporters, ex-employees, Teamsters, uh, workers, and it was just great. It was just overwhelming. We were, <laughs> it got to a point where we were just like engaging customers. We're like, hey, do you want a flyer? Do you want a sticker? Do you want to hear about our union? <laughs> and they were like, yes. Wow, moms, I didn't expect that. We're like, yeah, <laughs> we know. <laughs> I didn't expect moms, workers, you know, to need a union, but we explained them how, you know, their policies are very performative and it's all about their image. And they got to see a point of view of workers and they were like, yes, uh, I'm by your side, 100%. They were the stickers inside the store. They were talking to us. It just feels great to have the community on our side to lift our spirits, to, you know, give us really strength to keep on fighting. That's that's what they did to, to, to help, you know, bring bring each other up all the time. That was cool. That, that just sounds truly amazing. I wish so badly that I could have been there today. Of course, I was stuck at work, but like, it's so awesome to hear that it, like, you have that community support. Um, but as, I mean, it's a community support is amazing. But do you guys think that you have the votes to, to win this vote, to win this election? Oh, Kelsey? I, ab yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have had majority most of the time. I mean, like I said, it's a matter of turnover and, many people leaving 
um, just just the way it goes. Um, and we definitely have a majority right now. And you know, even some of our coworkers who are um, a little more skeptical, a little more on the fence, are you know coming over to our coming over to our side day by day and kind of like talking to us, calling our organizers. I just earlier got off the phone with one of our organizers who you know were ta- was telling me about a phone call with someone who we weren't sure about and she's kind of like you know she's she's hearing our side she kind of is, is getting it because our side is her side like we're we're also fighting for her um so we absolutely expect to win on friday no that's awesome mm-hmm. Um, on the NLRB website, when I was just looking before the call, I, I saw that there were two law firms that were hired by moms to handle the union efforts. Um, there was the law offices of Christopher McHale, and then there was the um, another firm called Baker and Hostetler. Baker and Hostetler. I might be saying that wrong, but who cares? Um, they okay. describe themselves on their website as having, quote, a long history of representing U.S. businesses in their dealings with organized labor. And one of the lawyers in this firm who is now working with moms, his name is Jay Crouppen, proudly brags on his profile on the firm's website about having, uh, about representing a, quote, food service industry distributor and fighting a lengthy and involved battle to defeat unionization efforts. Oh wow. oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, I don't know if these other guys that are leading your meetings are from this firm. Um, the names that you've given me don't sound familiar, but if they're making up names like Brandon Brown, then who knows? Um, they could be lawyers. Um, but oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, now that you mentioned, I'm checking the, uh, the petition on the labor board. One of our union busters happened to be from Ohio, just like this Todd... Dawson dude from Baker and Hostetler. I'm just speculating for all lawsuits and legal. Oh yeah, <laughs> legal just a whole lot of speculation going on here. <laughs> or so I heard, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> but you know, it's it's just coincidence. So yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, you know, and I think it's it's a thousand percent necessary to spotlight the firms that are essentially working to undermine efforts by workers to organize you know in fairness like a lot of the lawyers that were listed just seem like labor lawyers but this one jay crouppen um he seems like he's got a long history of doing this kind of stuff all right yeah that 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 is really really interesting somehow you know we don't get decent wages but allegedly our ceo has you know enough money to pay for expensive lawyers at this point, we don't care anymore. Uh, our organizer, Mo, gave us a great, great piece of advice when we get, you know, stuck thinking about the machine behind the company is that union bolsters don't get votes. <laughs> we should not focus our mm-hmm. energy on them. We got to focus our energy on each other, strengthening each other, you know, talking to each other. That's all we care about. Can't let, can't let them get into our heads. Yeah. <laughs> That, that is that is literally, uh, at least in my opinion, I think that that is like some of the most amazing advice that you can give to somebody who's organizing. It's the advice that I wish I had while I was trying to organize a former workplace. It, it's so important not to let those people like... Like you said, get in your head. Um, mm-hmm. It's uh, I just think what you guys are doing is so amazing, and you know not only that, you know the other mom stores are uh, you know other locations are in the process of unionizing. Um, do you guys know anything about how that's going and how listeners can go support um, your campaign and theirs? Um, any social media handles that you want to mention? that people can keep up with this story and and hear the results of your vote as well as the votes of other uh, locations? Yes, things that customers can do, absolutely. Uh, The CEO uh, claims that, you know, he takes feedback, he actually replies to customers and and to us sometimes. So he leaves his uh, email in the mom's bags so anyone can reach him this is one of the the mom's uh, main policies you have free access to the ceo so customers can definitely supporters can definitely email him 
and be like, hey, guys, uh, hey, Scott Nash, Mr. Nash, just letting you know, we customers support the your store's unionization efforts. Please, you know, work with them instead of against them. Recognize their unions, you know, stop the union busting. Just really telling the CEO, letting him know that we that they we have the community support. This is very important. He needs to hear it straight up from his customer base. It's very public. I mean, he's very proud of the fact. So. Well, you know, since he never actually responded to my question, um, does moms actually carry no evil? And when you win your election, can we get a product ban added to the union contract? <laughs> I know. I, I know. I've been thinking about that. I hope so. <laughs> but we do. Ca- we do carry evil foods. Um, <laughs> because I stacked that I stacked that out for so long, and I was like, I don't trust this. <laughs> I was stocking that out for like when I was yeah when I was like working the truck every single morning. I was like, you know, comrade Cluck, I don't know about you. I don't know. <laughs> Natalia and Kelsey, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. Um, we'd love to do a follow up episode after you guys win uh, your election. Um, is there any last minute, anything, any thoughts that you want to put out there? Um, any reminders about the election that you want to put out there before we wrap up? We'll keep everybody updated on the, Natalia, your, the, um, the Instagram handle is unionizing moms Hamden. Um, cause we are, um, like, you know, I mean, right now we have our election and any support we get is amazing, but we're already, you know preparing we hope not we hope that um mom's organic market and scott nash um comes to the negotiating table as as they are legally required to but um we are also prepared and preparing or if they stall and try any funny business there so we will keep we'll keep everybody updated Mm -hmm. all right well we can't wait to hear about it thank you so much guys thanks for taking the time i know you're all probably exhausted after that rally um we're just wishing you the best of luck we can't wait to hear about your victory 100 percent. thank you so very much guys thanks for having us